Hello and welcome to my channel. As you remember on this channel we're building the 7 degrees of freedom affordable robot arm. And couple of weeks ago we made this one. This is the axis number one of our future robot arm. It was quite tricky to build this axis number one because there is a lot of soldering. There is also this box with the ore drive where we had also a lot of soldering. And you see it's kind of axis plus the box. Not the best solution, but this is quite affordable solution and it works really great. So I really like this axis number one. But nevertheless, I thought that maybe it's possible to make simple axis number one. So to make another axis number one in a simple way. And for this, we're going to use the actuator, which I reviewed in my last video. This one, it's actually a very nice actuator. If you did not saw this video, please go and watch it. And so today it's gonna be kind of side project. It's written here, side project. Easy axis number one, simple axis number one. So let me show you how I built equivalent axis number one using this actuator. And so this is almost assembled alternative axis number one. And this is the actuator from my last video. All the orange and gray parts are 3D printed on my Prusa i3 MK3S 3D printer. This is by the way PETG material, Prusa meant actually. All the gray parts in the future they will be made out of uh, carbon fiber for the rigidity. But now they are just 3D printed. And this is the failed parts. There is not so many, so I hope this means that my design skill improves. So let me show you what is inside. First of all, this is Adler, we will talk about it later. This is actuator, this is the output shaft. Over here there is a slew bearing. It's actually the slew bearing and sandwich between this plate and this plate inside this orange piece. And the most interesting part is here. So to the output of the actuator I connected this pulley. There is this huge belt, it's like 25 millimeter wide belt. And here there is a big pulley which is connected to the output shaft and slew bearing. So this is uh, everything is like super simple. There is a gear ratio of two between this pulley and this one. Here I have another small bearing for the support of this pulley. I'm not sure that I really need it, but I put it. So actually this piece goes here and this bearing is going to be supported by this small piece. So I need this idler in order to tension the belt. So now you see it's not tensioned. And so the idler goes inside this hole. And this time I listened to your comments and I made the idler with the axis, which is not on the axis. <laughs> so like this, I can rotate this axis, which is not on the axis of the idler in order to tension the belt. So this idler goes inside this hole and now we need to tension it. To hold this idler in place, I will put three M3 screws in these holes. Now let me show you how to tension this belt. So for this we need to rotate the axis of the idler. And I can do this with the Allen key. If I put it here, so you see like this I can rotate the axis. So now I think the belt is properly tensioned. And so we can continue the assembly with the cow which goes here. So as you can see the construction is quite simple. There is uh, not many parts. These all parts are quite easy to print but uh, this part is quite big so I need to print it on 45 degrees. It barely fits on the Prusa bed but it does fit. So this cover goes here and we need to install a lot of screws over here and also for the idler. And now I need to tighten all the screws. And this is our beauty. Look how cool is it. It's also back drivable. This is normal because uh, there is 2 to 1 gear ratio on the belt and 6 to 1 gear ratio inside this black actuator. RMD X8 Pro. Great. And this is two actuators side by side. So this is the original one. And this is the alternative one using the MIT Mini Cheetah like actuator. This one is expensive one and this one is affordable one. This one a little bit complicated because there is all the gears, there is uh, 
a lot of wires, there is a soldering inside the O drive and stuff like this. And this one is way easier to build. This one has a controller outside, this is O drive controller. And this one has a controller built in, actually it's over here. This one first of all has a belt reduction and planetary gearbox reduction over here. This one has the same but in different order. So first of all it has a planetary gearbox reduction inside the actuator itself and the belt reduction is over here. That's why I used here a huge, a super large 25 mm belt. And here I used a 9 mm belt. Now let's connect this one and see how it works. We would need 48 volts power supply and an Arduino with a CAN bus shield. This is SparkFun CAN bus shield and it has a small joystick on top of it like this. We can control this actuator using this small joystick. Power supply and CAN bus. Now let's switch on power supply. Green LED means that everything is okay. Uh -huh. It works. It makes a little bit strange sound, but I don't know where it comes from. So I've tested the actuator, so the noise is not coming from actuator. It's either from the bearing or from the belt or from the idler. And this is how it looks inside. And how it moves inside. In one direction it does not make any strange sound. But in opposite direction there is a strange sound. And now kind of comparison of the original axis number one and simple or alternative axis number one. So this one is affordable, this is, is simple. So this one needs calibration, but I think it could be solved by storing the data in the O drive. But for the moment, each time when I switch it on, I need to do the calibration. This is not a real comparison because the speed of this one is set to the way higher value than speed of this one. And also on this one, I have a super simple joystick, which only has like on off position. And uh, this one has like, analog joystick, the proper joystick. This one and this one and two together. Of course, the speed of this actuator could be increased by a lot, but for the moment I keep it slow for the test, so like this it's safe. And now the conclusion time. Today we built this alternative axis number one. And this is the original version of axis number one. Both works fine and uh, I cannot say which one is better, which one is worse. I think the thing is that this one is uh, affordable and this one easy to assemble. And also for this one you almost don't need to solder anything. But I think they are more or less equivalent. Uh, this one, I suppose that it's gonna have a little bit lower backlash because the belt should not add any backlash and belt system has a reduction ratio of 2, so we should decrease the backlash of the actuator by factor of 2. And here we have the planetary gearbox on the output shaft and these planetary gears, they are 3D printed and they give us some backlash. Of course, we can print these gears a little bit larger and like this we can decrease this backlash but when we decrease this backlash we will increase the friction in the system and so there is a kind of trade-off between the friction or torque and the backlash. At least there is this balance in the 3D printed gears. With the precise metallic gears we can get like low backlash and low friction. Thank you for watching this video till the end. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to put like to this video, don't forget to put one or several comments and also if you would like you can share this video in your social media. Also you can support this channel via PayPal or Patreon, all the links in the description to this video. And by the way, here are the names of all the people who support me on Patreon. Thanks to these people I'm able to build this kind of projects, to buy this actuator and basically to continue with this YouTube channel. So thank you guys and girls, you are the best. As usual, robotic revolution is coming, so we should be prepared. 
That's why we're building all these robots. Actually, to accelerate this robotic revolution. <laughs> Good luck with your projects and see you next time.